I wrote a book entitled Witchcraft in the Pews, Who's Sitting Next to You? I wrote Spiritual Authority, Intel, uh, Warfare Optics, uh, five books with Mary Kate Baxter, the doctor, uh, um, um, Revelation of Divine Revelation of Deliverance, Divine Revelation of Prayer, Divine Revelation of Angels, several books we wrote together. Um, I have about 60 some odd books to my literary credit. I too have come to a place in God where as from time to time, put me on the main camera, put it in my face, come a little closer to me. From time to time, or put me on this camera. From time to time, I have um, read scripture and have come to uh, a new revelation or a new understanding on an ancient text. And before running out and sharing it with everyone, I go over it and over and over and over. And then I make my apologies. And because the word of God is something that should be and must be studied. That's, that goes without saying. And so I'm not bothered by new revelations. I'm not bothered by maturing and uh, coming to a brand new understanding. I'm not bothered by a person having a personal conviction about something that they're doing and want to correct it. I'm not bothered by that. What I'm bothered by is that if what I taught on witchcraft in the pews 20 years later is wrong, then I owe all of the people, the two million persons who bought the book, I owe them a refund. If I am a shyster, if I am selling a product and the product that I am selling is flawed, like Johnson & Johnson, who is now up for billions of dollars in their and the, the drug companies, the tobacco companies, who knew that there was tar, in cancer-causing tar, how they had went after our teens. All of those companies in the natural is paying punitive damages for the mistakes they made. What I am saying when I was sick, my mother said to me, get a seed, sow a seed, place a demand on the seed, and I'm healed today. Mm -hmm. When ever I need something from God, I never go to the Lord empty-handed according to the scripture and ye shall come before the Lord your God and do not come empty-handed young Saul did not go before uh, uh, Samuel when he lost his daddy's donkeys because he had nothing to bring and yet his servant was doing a little better than him and he said I have a quarter shekel of silver he said that'd be enough the queen Sheba did not go before uh, Solomon without a seed. Naaman did not go before the prophet. The prophet went to the woman and he says, you want to move of God in your life? Make me a cake first. The Bible declares that a portion of our dough shall be placed into the hand of the priest so that the glory of the Lord would not depart from this house. The Bible teaches us explicitly that when we bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse, he then rebukes the devourer for our sake. Throughout the scripture, the foundations of what we believe is based and predicated upon giving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and required the same thing from Abraham to offer his son Isaac, his only son, up. I am not saying that the prosperity gospel is all correct. I'm also not saying that the prosperity gospel is all wrong. What I'm saying is that there are bad people everywhere. Bad police officers, bad sheriffs, bad judges, 
bad preachers, bad Christians. Heck, they're bad dressers. Some people just can't dress. <laughs> bad. But it doesn't mean that everything is off because of it. Dan Willis is a friend of mine, pastors a church in Chicago. Dan Willis, name was called and rebuked openly. And then it was said that Dan received the rebuke. And I say this to you, Dan, if you received that rebuke, then you revoked the blessings of God on the life of your son. For it was the thousand dollar seed that you had sown on behalf of your son and God delivered him out of that crisis and now he's a preacher in your pulpit. And if you, if you return back to agreeing with being rebuked for something that you did as it related to your faith, you have revoked the blessings of God on the life of your son. Now listen to me. There are crooks and charlatans out there everywhere. But I tell you this. The scriptures tell us that blessed is the cheerful giver. Liberal soul shall be made fat. The scripture says that uh, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. I know the scriptures. The scripture says, give and it shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The scriptures tell us that God will bless 30, 60, and 100 fold. The scriptures also tells us that the Lord spoke to Moses to go down to Egypt and to receive an offering of the children of Israel. And this is the offering that you should take of gold and of silver, of goat's hair, dyed purple, etc. So there are offerings of command. There are free will offerings. There's tithe. There's sacrificial offerings. There's offerings of, uh, of, of repentance. There's sin offerings. There are trespass offerings. Whichever offering you fit into, the God that we serve has established his kingdom on this principle. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. And I say to you, Pastor Benny, I say to you, Pastor Benny, this morning on behalf of the clergy around the world, that your convictions are correct, but they're personal. And I just ask you to do one thing, one thing. Share with the body of Christ, scripturally, like I just did, and then we'll be fine. If not, you owe the body of Christ a refund on all of the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars that you have received from them when you told them that this is the word of God. Bishop George Bloomer, I'm waiting on your response. Let's get ready for communion this morning.